the importance of using money now you have to tell your kids hello money doesn't grow on trees yeah no matter how much you see wealth around you money just doesn't grow on trees and if you want to teach your child the real value of money it's about how to acquire money how to save money and of course how to spend money don't save all your so uncle gave you um, 10,000 naira for your birthday don't plunge the whole amount on something save towards something or take a little bit buy something and keep the rest it's really about the usage of money and the value of money and telling them that you know um, we do not have a bottomless pit of money you know and that we need to be able to spend money in a very careful manner okay? is, it, is it is it wrong to sometimes tell your children well we can't afford this now we'll do the, we'll do this later yeah if you're, if you're assuring them that it's a thing that maybe later when an op another opportunity arises yes but if you tell them i can't afford it no you're dampening their spirit. Mm. You're, you, that's why I said aspire. Teach them how to aspire that, you know what, we may be able to afford this, but a bit later. Or, you know what, can you wait till next month? Maybe when I'm a bit more settled, I'll be able to do that. Give them something to hope for. Do you understand? Hope and, again? Yeah. Yes, to hope for. Yeah. So, uh, I'm what, what, let hope? them know that there's always opportunities in life, that your situation now is not permanent, yeah. that it can change at any point in time, and for the better. You know, Tip number five, I would say, is teach them respect for Eld res how to respect elderly people. Now, I don't mean the people that are using walking sticks alone. I mean anybody who is actually older, older. than your child. Let them be able to respect them. And when I say respect, it, it could come in any way. It could be a good deed, helping them ha you know, get up from the seat, give them a seat, hold their back, help, do a show or something. It's very important that they know that, at least especially with our own culture, that you must respect people that are older than you. Okay, and somehow, somehow, we're seeing less and less of that nowadays, unfortunately. And tip number six is, you have to teach your child which knife and which fork. Why? The best well-behaved child, the manners are seen at the dinner table. So whether they're talking with their mouth full of food, you can see it, or whether they're slapping at their food or they're slapping while they're drinking, or the whole plate is, the food is all scattered all over the place. You know, it's really about... <laughs> When you're eating, just eat with some, you know, be cool. Don't rush your food. Cool. I, keep, I keep saying, you know, with food, it's really about dining is like dancing. You've got to take it one step at a time and learn how to taste your food, not just chew. So you see some people, they're eating a bowl or something and they're scoffing it up and it's like a race to finish. You know, it's like, isn't that food hot? <laughs> Is your mouth an oven? <laughs> you know? So basically, yeah, um, even with executives and we adults as well, honestly speaking, they, they've said it and it's been proven. If you really want to see how much decorum someone has, just watch them at the dinner table. Really and truly speaking, because there's so many things that go on on the table that you can actually use as identifying how much soft skill and how much manners you have, you know. So which knife and which fork? And basically, just how to, and most schools now, and I think most people now are beginning to realize the importance of teaching children that. Step number seven, or um, etiquette tip number seven is, hmm, an easy one, but not, not well brought, not well um, exercised. Teach your children magic words. Please, thank Please, you. Thank you, I'm Excuse sorry. me, pardon. You know what I'm saying? Like, huh? Huh? What did you say? Hello, people like, oh gosh. And it, it just shows that your child is brought up in a, in, in a well-mannered way. And guess what? When, you, when your child goes through that in, as a child, it, it's going to transpire as an adult. And, and it makes you be, become a good leader because you're going to be able to tell your subordinates how things are done in better ways. Well, you know, I, was, I was in a <laughs> store the other day and I finished paying and the, the, the um, cashier didn't have change. And she just said to me, I don't have change. Hmm. And I just stopped in my track and I said, I didn't hear the magic word. <laughs> and she was, I didn't hear the magic word. I am sorry I don't have change. Thank you. That's it. I don't, it's my money. Yeah. You don't have a right to it. You just can't tell me I don't have change and that's the end of the story. Yeah. It can't be the yeah. end of the story because the money you, is mine. I will tell you, <laughs> you don't have change. Go find it. I'm waiting. <laughs> Yeah. And I will wait for my change. <laughs> Even if I wanted to leave it for you, yeah. I will wait for it. Then I will give it to you. Then I can have it next it. time. You see why we try to emphasize etiquette at a young age? Catch them while they're young. <laughs> we need to take a quick break. We're back. Don't go away.
<laughs> okay, welcome back. So, Janet, um, <laughs> you were talking about the 11 points you have. You really yes. have to speed them so up because of the question yeah, of we're being okay. at number seven. So, we're, we're at number eight now, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. So, at number eight, really, um, you know, the kids are getting smarter and smarter every day. And I younger and too. younger. As they're getting younger and younger, they're getting smarter and smarter. You do need to, I, I mentioned meet and greet. You know, meet and greet is very important. Sometimes, you know, it's not about a high buy situation. We want to make sure that you say, you know, if, 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 even if you say to me, good afternoon, Auntie Janet, that's, mo that's nicer than even saying good afternoon, you know, that kind of thing. But <laughs> teach your children. And that's because you know me. If you don't know me, then I wouldn't expect you to say that. But always greet nicely. Meet people and greet them nicely. Um, show number, um, sorry, tip yeah. number nine is about shores. Now, yes, we all have gone through the phase of, or still going through the phase of having housekeepers and nannies and cooks and all of that. But yes, it is very, very important that you teach your child basic chores. And the first one is about personal hygiene. So learn how to make your bed when you get up in the morning. You know, don't not just chuck just, your clothes on the floor. Just make it clean your room. Yeah, that's what I mean. Clean your room. <laughs> and as the girls are getting, you know, especially the young teenage girls that are now getting into the, the out of wearing makeup and stuff, the room gets even messier. The makeup is all over the place, you know. So you, and, and with girls too, going into puberty and guys as well, you know, we like to chuck things on the floor here, there and everywhere. Even if you do that, make time out to learn how to clean your room. And then basic chores in the house. You know, a friend of mine teaches her kids to, you, the two-year-old or the four-year-old takes out the, empties out the rubbish bins all around the house. They sweep the house before they go to school. Sometimes they do some, kids as young as they are, they're learning how to cook nowadays. Yeah. So basic shows, you know, that at least when, you know, my, a friend of mine has four girls and she taught her, she's a caterer, she does cakes. All her cakes are all her girls, sorry, are expert cake makers because they started learning when they were young. And she's, sometimes she just sits down and she does nothing and the girls do all the work. And she's so proud and happy that she taught them at a young age. Mm. You know, so basic things in the kitchen. You can imagine when they grow up to be young, you know, women and wives. What, what, what's going to happen? Which heart. <laughs> and of course, I say number, number They've 10. They've suddenly got that one right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then tip number 10 really, again, is also, you know, teaching about them about good health with hygiene so teach your children how to eat healthily you know they might like the sugar drinks and stuff but you know number them don't eat don't drink more than this you know at a certain time or in a week for that matter you, you're not allowed more than x number within a week you know because that's teaching them how to stay healthy mm. eat healthily don't eat too much of this and eat too much of that stop snacking on you know you can have snacks but don't don't, don't indulge mm. teach your children not to indulge themselves and that's really teaching them how to stay healthy you know, as a parent, you're, you must watch your child if you think that they're going out of, out of um, the way. And finally, I have to say, you've got to be able to teach your children how to share the spirit. Now, your children may be coming from, you know, a relatively good home. Let them remember that there's some kids out there that do not have what they have. So if you are doing anything charitable or let them know that there are poor kids out there there are the needy out there sometimes we have to do some charitable work sometimes we have to raise funds for them I remember when I opened the charity for my um, Heart Foundation I really got my children's school involved they were not doing um, raising funds for the poor and the needy and they didn't really have the full understanding that people out there are not as you know, well to do or lucky as they were. And I changed the entire concept of helping people that just need help. So they were eager, Mommy, Daddy, we want to raise money for this child needs a heart operation. Mm -hmm. And they were at the forefront mm -hmm. and they really raised money. And that was really beautiful. So teach them how to share the spirit, you know. And of course, in sharing the spirit as well, remember your own beliefs, your religious beliefs. Inculcate them very well in your child. It doesn't mean that when they grow up, they might not change their own, but at least leave them with something that they can hold on to as a parent. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Very much, Janet. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Have you got your handbook? Different. Well, yes. <laughs> Somewhat. Okay. To bring up the grandchildren. Yeah. And it's a person to your children. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> yeah. So I hope right. those tips did help. Thank you, Janet. They did indeed. Thank you very much. We were speaking okay. with Janet at day two, our etiquette coach. So as we're back in a moment for the home stretch. Janice Gay.